Well, good evening. I hope that you've had a great day today. I want to encourage you to turn in your Bibles to 1 John chapter 1. We're going to look at the latter part of this chapter, and then we're going to go into the first couple of verses in chapter 2. I want you to think about what John is doing as he's writing these letters. These were written at the end of the first century. And there were a lot of teachings that were going on, a lot of false teachings that were going on, and really some, some new religions that were, uh, that were coming up. One of those was known as Gnosticism. And, and John, in his letters, uh, to a large degree, deals with the issues that surround the church and its interaction with those in the first century and, and in the early second century uh, who were holding to this new teaching of Gnosticism. Now, in John's writing, what he is doing is encouraging the Christians to make sure they remember who Christ is, that, that they recognize our responsibility to live in such a way that honors God. And John does this all the way through in different ways. But for the most part, what we see, especially in 1 John, is a, a teaching coming from a perspective as if he were in a court of law and he is arguing his case. And so as we start this particular devotional tonight, I want you to listen to the first three verses. John says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and touched with our hands, concerning the word of life. The life was made manifest, and we have seen it, and testify to it, and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father, and was made manifest to us, that which we have seen and heard, we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us, uh, and indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete." So John is saying, uh, in, in a very strategic way, okay, the things that I'm going to share with you are things that I've seen, things that I've heard, things that I've experienced. And not only that, it's things that God has made known. And so here this word of life, whom I believe he, he identifies in his gospel as being Jesus. He says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The word became flesh, John 1 verse 14. Well, now he says it's this word uh, that's made manifest to us. It's Jesus. God has shown himself to us in the form of Jesus. And John says, we have heard him. We have seen him. Uh, we have experienced his teaching. And so we're wanting to share this with you. We are proclaiming this, that's what he says, so that our joy may be complete. Now, verse 5 and following down through chapter 2, verse 2 is really what I want us to focus in on this evening for just a few moments. Now, the message that John gives to us is found in verse 5. Listen to what he says. He says, This is the message that we have heard from him and proclaim to you. Here's the message. That God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. That's the message that they heard from the Word who became flesh and made His dwelling among them. That, that they heard this message that God indeed is light and in Him there is no darkness at all. Now this is key uh, to all of John's writing, uh, not only just to this first epistle. Uh, the fact that God is light and in Him there is no darkness at all. Uh, is a critical statement, especially when we look at the rest of the writings of John because John uses a lot of symbolism and he uses a lot of discussions with regard to light and dark. Light representing that which is good, dark representing that which is evil. And so he says God is light. God is good. And in God there is no darkness at all. And so therefore we might think of it in terms of God is good and in him there is no evil at all. That's really what John is saying here. Though he's using 
uh, the terminology of light and darkness. And so, again, the message that they have heard from him, from Jesus, and they proclaim now to you, John says to his audience, to us, is that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. Then verse 6 comes. Now, the interesting part of John's writing, at least in this opening section, takes place right here, beginning at verse 6, where we have this uh, series of tests for the individual. There are three false claims that are made, and John uses the phrase, if we say. So anytime in these uh, next few verses where you see the phrase, if we say, you know that John is opening up one of these false claims. The first one we find in verse 6, the second one we find in verse 8, the third one we find in verse 10. And so if we say, that's a key phrase. Now also with those three false claims are three antidotes. And we see those in verse 7, verse 9, and then chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. And so not only do we have these three false claims or false statements, but we also have these three antidotes that are answers to these false claims. And so let's look at the first claim in verse 6. The first claim he says there in verse 6, If we say we have fellowship with him, with God, while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Okay, so there it starts. If we say, if, if this is something we claim, or if we say this, that, that we walk in the light, uh, and, and yet there's darkness in us. If, if we say that we have fellowship with him, yet walk in darkness, then he says we lie and do not practice the truth. Well, why would he say that? Well, the, the reality is what he just said is the message. The message that they heard, the message that they proclaim is that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. And so if there is darkness in us, uh, by necessity, we cannot have fellowship or, or partnership with God because there is no darkness at all uh, in God. And so the first false claim is that we have fellowship with God, though in reality we walk in darkness. If we say we have fellowship with God, but we're not living the way that we ought to live in, in order to have fellowship with God then we lie and do not practice the truth. Now, the antidote to this first false claim comes in verse 7. A very well-known verse. He says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. Okay, so the reality is uh, that there are some who would make a false claim and say, hey, we have fellowship with God, but yet they're living a life that doesn't exemplify fellowship with God. Uh, the antidote is, hey, make sure you're walking in the light as he is in the light. Make sure you're living a life of goodness. That's what he is saying here. Walk in the light as God is in the light. So walk according or live according to God's will, God's desire. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, then we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. That word cleanse there is in the present tense and it would hint at a sin being removed now continually in the present. And so God's son offered his life and his blood was shed so that our sins, our, uh, our darkness can be covered over, can, can be removed, can be cleansed. And that's a continual thing. And so the second false claim that we see comes in verse 8. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Okay? Second false claim. If we say that we have no sin... We deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. That seems pretty straightforward. But then he gives the antidote to this in verse 9. He says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful to forgive us, faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Okay? False claim is, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, the truth is not in us. However, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. The third false claim comes in verse 10. If we say 
we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Now the antidote comes in the next two verses. It's the first two verses of chapter 2. The antidote here is that we have an advocate. Okay, so listen to what he says. My little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation or the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And so John gives us these three false claims. He gives us the three antidotes. And he does so in a way that's very much like an argument made in a court of law. And so antidote one is walk in the light. Antidote two, confess your sins. Antidote three, remember we have an advocate with the Father. If you think about these false claims that are made, if we say that we have fellowship with God while we walk in darkness, well, uh, that's impossible. We can't do both. The second false claim, if we say we have no sin, certainly we're all sinners and fall short of the glory of God. And the third false claim is very closely connected to the second, where he says, if we say we have not sinned. Uh, Certainly we know that we have all fallen short of God's glory. But thankfully the three antidotes are given. Walk in the light as he is in the light. Confess your sins. And remember, we have an advocate with the Father. Let's always remember that God is light and in Him there is no darkness at all. And if we want to enjoy fellowship with one another and fellowship with God, then we must walk in the light. We must confess our sins and we must remember that we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, not for our sins only, for the sins of the whole world.